I don't know if I'm succeeding, but I'm trying. Hey everybody, my name is Sam and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while, <laughs> like over half a year, a while uh, since I posted a video. As I'm sure you know, 2020 was a rough year for, well, the planet, but also it's just been a rough year for me Personally, there's been a lot of family stuff going on, and I've been working from home for a year now, which has wreaked havoc on my anxiety, and I haven't really been reading anything. Anything I did read post, like, May has pretty much just been a reread of an old favorite, and at some point I might sit down and do a video about, like, books I reread for comfort when I'm feeling stressed, but that's just not what I feel like talking about today. So instead, I thought I would sit down and bring back this barely started knit chat series where I work on my current knitting project and talk to you about something. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about some of my recent favorites. I will talk about the top two new to me books that I read in 2020, so there will be some book content here, but this is mostly just going to be kind of random stuff that's been helping me get through it. <laughs> my knitting project that I'm working on right now is actually a scarf I am making for my friend Sue, who you may know from the booktube channel Spinebreakers. This was supposed to be a holiday gift, but like with most things in life, I have fallen woefully behind. And as of filming this, it is February 8th, and that's fine. I know sometimes when I do this kind of stuff, it's really hard to tell exactly what my project looks like, especially something like a scarf because it's, you know, like long. This one's a little more than halfway done. Um, but I will insert a progress photo that I took yesterday morning, like over my face now, so you can kind of see what we're working with. Um, and then, you know, I'll probably post a picture to social media once it's finished and this video is up and stuff. Anyway, just figured this would be a good time to chat about some, some favorites, you know, a little bit about books, but mostly about life because Sometimes you just don't read, and that's okay. But for those of you who are only here for bookish content, I will talk about my favorite books that I read in 2020 first. So my number one favorite book of the last year had to be The Martian by Andy Weir. I fucking loved that book, right? It was just everything I ever dreamed of and more. I fell deeply in love with the character of Mark Watney, got very, very attached to him, and got very concerned about what was going to happen to him. I cried more than once. I actually buddy read that book with Jade from Jaded Reader, and I think it sort of turned into a little bit of a joke between the two of us how deeply invested I was. It kind of surprised me, because I didn't really expect that book to be like an emotional journey, uh, because it is such a, a science-heavy science fiction, but man, it really, it really took me on a ride, friends. I rated it five stars, and it was one of only two new-to-me books that I did that with last year, so that is really saying something. The second book that I would say was a new-to-me favorite from 2020 <laughs> was Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts by Kate Reculia. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's probably not don't at me. That book was like the Addams Family meets like Ready Player One or the Westing game. It was like a scavenger hunt to become the heir to this eccentric billionaire's fortune and but it was a, a billionaire who was like obsessed with all things macabre and dark and weird and it was just like so much fun and the protagonist in that book, Tuesday Mooney, is probably the protagonist I have personally related to the most in a really, really long time. Like, it's just a ton of fun, and I've only really heard a couple of people mention it, but then again, I also haven't watched much booktube, so maybe I'm just, like, way behind, as usual. <laughs> Moving on to just kind of, like, random stuff that I've enjoyed over the course of the last, I don't know, year. I've got some, like, food and snack-related stuff. I've got some, like, skin care, beauty stuff some music, some TV, you know, all the manner of things you would normally find in a favorites video. So I guess I'll start with the, like, food stuff, because everybody likes food, right? And in true me fashion, it's, it's not one of my videos without talking about at least 
several beverages. So the first thing I'm going to mention is that my darling husband for Christmas this year bought me a soda stream machine uh, so that I could feed into my sparkling water addiction without having to, you know, recycle a ton of cans or bottles or whatever. And I use that shit every day. It's great because especially with me having been like working from home, you literally just use like tap water and then you chill it in your fridge and their bottles and then you like put it in the little machine and push the button and then it's bubbly and then you can add flavor or not. Right now the one I'm drinking it's just plain like sparkling water but then I put some frozen fruit in it instead of ice cubes and it's just a good time. I like it. <laughs> and then the second beverage thing that I have to talk about is actually a tea that I got in one of my Sips by boxes. I got a sample of it, I think like last February maybe, or March. And it is the Winter Court Tea from Dryad Tea. And it is a rose and pink peppercorn chai tea and it is delicious. I've talked about like my obsession with lavender before, but uh, rose is definitely a close second as far as like flavors that I enjoy. Like I don't really like flowery smells, but flowery flavors like bitch sign me up. I love it. I ended up ordering like two full-size tins of it after I finished the sample because it's just a magical experience all around. 10 out of 10. I have one like snack item, so I guess I'll do that next. I'm like trying to come up with a logical order for this. I don't know if I'm succeeding, but I'm trying. My snack item is the Dots Homestyle Pretzels. They're like little pretzel twists and they're in like a red bag. Although actually my personal favorites are the ones that come in the blue bag, which are the Southwest flavored ones, which basically just tastes like you took a pretzel twist and just like doused it in taco seasoning, which is maybe not for everyone, but I'm very into it. But uh, the regular Homestyle ones in the red bag are also actually really good. The seasoning blend that they put on there is delicious. I just really enjoy like the slightly spicier Southwest version a little bit more, but I uh, have the regular ones in my cupboard right now and will consume either one of them at any given moment. I love pretzels. They have like absolutely no nutritional value, but like they're still one of my favorite snacks and I just don't care. So next I will talk about, I don't know, skincare? Sure. <laughs> so. I have one skincare item that's like a rediscovered favorite from a few years ago when I was watching a lot of beauty YouTube and first like getting into makeup, which I don't wear much of these days, but I enjoy it anyway. But uh, one of the things that I discovered when I was watching a lot of beauty YouTube was the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. Um, it's kind of an expensive moisturizer but my skin is like Sahara Desert Dry. I deal with psoriasis and um, just general sensitivity and redness and flakiness. And it is one of the only lotions I can put on my face and my body that ha never causes inflammation or a reaction uh, at all. It's thick enough to really feel like it's giving you a lot of moisture, but not so thick that you feel like you're like really globbing it on your face. And I like to use it for my facial moisturizer and I also carry a small tube of it in my purse and use it for my hands because my hands get so dry, especially with COVID where you're washing them more. I live in Wisconsin, which I don't know if you guys know, it gets cold here. So the winters are incredibly drying and horrible on my skin. And I also still am volunteering at the cat shelter. So I'm using hand sanitizer, I'm washing my hands and going out in the cold and it's just been hell on my skin and that has helped so much. So if you have really dry sensitive skin and are willing to spend like $25 on six ounces of moisturizer, I recommend it. Next, we'll go with some air quotes fashion items. So for the most part, my quarantine fashion has been like leggings and a hoodie. Uh, so a pair of leggings that I really, really like a lot. They're actually the Victoria's Secret pink like yoga style leggings. Those ones in particular I really like because they're thick enough that you don't like see all your business when you wear them. But also the waistband on them is great. It's not as 
thick as like a regular yoga pants waistband and they come up high enough that you don't feel like they're going to fall down but they're not so high waisted that they're putting unnecessary pressure anywhere when you're sitting down for a long time and I wear those all the time. I actually wish I had more than two pairs because I wear them a lot. <laughs> and then my other like kind of fashion-y item is actually a pair of shoes. <laughs> um, specifically like winter shoes. So as I mentioned, I live in Wisconsin. It's cold here. It's an icy wonderland outside right now um, because it snowed a ton last weekend and then immediately dropped to like eight degrees below zero. Uh, and all of the snow turned into ice mountains <laughs> and I am uncoordinated. But I don't really go outside often enough that I have need for actual snow boots. So instead, this year, I purchased myself a pair of Vans tennis shoes that are the Skate High, which is like their classic high top, um, but it's the Mountain Edition. So they have like a little bit of extra grip on them so that you don't break your face open if you walk on ice. The top layer is like double thick to make it so that it's warmer around your ankles. And the exterior is made out of like a water resistant suede and they're super comfortable. They're really heavy. They're like a pound each. <laughs> um, so for like a van sneaker, that's pretty heavy, but I wear them every time I go outside in winter and I have yet to fall and they keep my ankles really warm and they keep my feet really dry and they're great. And then I don't have to change my shoes if I go inside somewhere because they're just a pair of Vans sneakers externally. And the ones that I got are black with like chocolate brown details. So they go with literally everything I own and they're great. Sorry if this is like not interesting, by the way, to any of you. I just don't have interesting things to say these days. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> a favorite band that I've been listening to a lot recently, they are not a new band by any means. They are definitely a band from like the 80s, but I've been listening to them a lot in the last couple of months, and that band is Dramarama. I will maybe, if I'm feeling motivated, insert a clip of their most popular song, which is called Anything Anything. They're just like frantic, kind of new wavy 80s alternative stuff that I like really enjoy when I'm not listening to show tunes. And then a weird thing has happened this year because like I said, I haven't really been reading. Um, and for the first time in years, I'm actually watching TV shows like as they're released. We don't have cable or anything, but I we have Hulu and Prime and like every other fucking dreaming service that exists in the world probably. So there are two shows that I've been watching like as they're released episode by episode and the first one is this season of Hell's Kitchen which is I think season 19 and part of the reason is because I used to watch Hell's Kitchen every week like without fail when I was younger um, but I, I went back to it this season because actually the owner of my favorite local restaurant here in Milwaukee is one of the chefs on Hell's Kitchen this season. His name is Adam Pollack. He's very talented. And here he has a restaurant called Egg and Flour and they do house-made pasta with like really unique ingredient combos. And it's such high quality. It's so delicious. And I just really wanted to see how well he would do on the show. And so far it's, it's going well. There are like five episodes in and he's not gotten into any major kerfuffles, but we'll see how it goes. And watching this has just like reminded me of how entertaining like competitive cooking shows are. I sometimes forget. And Hell's Kitchen in particular, because Gordon Ramsay is such, such a guy. <laughs> uh, and I've, I've just been really enjoying it. And the second show that I've been doing that with is the second season of A Discovery of Witches, because the first season came out like two years ago in 2018, or at least it came out in the United States in 2018. I think it was released in the UK first, but I, I watched most of it except for like the last episode. And then I finally went back this year because I saw they were doing the second season 
rewatched the whole first season and have been watching the second season weekly, episode by episode, as they're released. And you guys know I love those books, and I love the show. They're different. They've definitely made some changes, but um, the spirit is there, and the casting is actually really top-notch. They cast it so well, um, and I've just been having a great time doing that. But it's so hard to like watch things as they're released when you're used to like the world of streaming services and like bingeable television. It's it's super wild. But like, you know, it's it's a good time. I'm I'm enjoying it. It forces me to like, you know, slow down and maybe like do something else with my time except for like sitting around watching TV. But, you know, that's all I've really felt like doing, honestly, in my free time. And I have to allow myself that freedom sometimes if that's all you have the capacity for, that's all you have the capacity for, right? Anyway, that was my current recent 2020, early 2021 favorites featuring exactly two books because I have not read fucking anything in the last year. Anyway, let me know what some of your recent favorite stuff is down below. Otherwise, just in general, like, let me know how you're doing. I haven't talked to you guys in so long. I'm so behind on booktube. I have been the most useless social media person. But you know what? It's fine. We'll get there. I am hoping to post another sci-fi for non-sci-fi readers recommendations soon. Hopefully, maybe about the horror genre because I think that could be fun but those just take a lot of energy and it's been really hard to actually narrow down my options for that one because there's like a lot of crossover. There may be a few more of these just kind of long form chatty videos where I work on my knitting projects because honestly I've just felt like doing a lot of knitting lately and because these are easier for me to film where I can just like ramble about some topic or another while I'm working on a project. So I might just keep doing some of these while I'm like sort of attempting to get back into the swing of making videos. Uh, hope that's cool. Anyway, I miss you guys. I love you guys. I will talk to you soon, hopefully.